asked beat makers on Instagram how many times they actually finish a beat and I did not expect the responses. A lot of you guys have so many unfinished beats laying around, beats that could have been potential bangers, but they never will be because they're just sitting on a hard drive never to be found. I also was that guy once and I know why so many producers struggle with this and that is because of your workflow. If you want to finish your beats faster you need a better workflow and today I'm gonna give you some tricks. Imagine you're mixing a beat and you have this beautiful chain of effects. Now let's say you want this chain on another track then please don't try to replicate the effect chain on the other track. Instead right click the mixer track and select file. Then save mixer state as. Click and drag that to another mixer and boom all the effects from the first mixer are now copied on the other one. Next, please make presets. That's the most important one. Really guys, it's it's really important. <laughs> this saves me so much time. I created an entire template for myself and every time I launch up FL Studio, that template will start up automatically. Let's take a look at my project. When you look at my channel rack, I already have a kick, snare, hi-hat and 808 ready. And I also loaded up Omnisphere, Keyscape and Serum because I use those VSTs the most. It's always easier to delete a VST than to find it back in the plugin list. But Timon, are you seriously using the same drum samples for every beat you make? No, I usually start making the melody and then with the drum samples already loaded in, I can can quickly come up with a drum pattern. Then when the pattern is created I can simply drag in the samples I want to use. Seriously with this method you can make a beat in 5 to 10 minutes. Next let's take a look at the mixer. As you can see I have all my mixer color labeled and they also have a name. The first mixer track is used for the bass and the second one for the 808. Then after that I create a bus and every melodic element will be sent to that bus. That way I can control all the instruments at once with this single mixer track. Then I do the same for the drums. You can also sidechain the kick and snare to the 808 and bass and then set it up. Then all you need to do is play around with the compressor and voila, it's sidechained. At the end, I create my effects buses, usually reverb, delay and distortion. Then in the reverb bus, add the effect to it and set the dry to zero, then the wet to 100. Now, if you want to add reverb to the piano, simply send it to the mixer and with this knob, you can control the amount. This will also save you so much CPU because you only need one reverb effect. And same thing for delay and distortion. Next, what if your melody doesn't fit the tempo of your beat? Well, that's annoying. You can try and match it yourself, but you can also let a I'll do that for you. Double click the melody and then the properties will open up. Right click on the time knob and select 4 bars. Now the melody will fit perfectly. Have you always wondered how they made these juicy hi-hat rolls? Well stop wondering because you're about to learn how to do it yourself. Draw in a note in the piano roll. They usually sound best right before the snare. Select it and hit Alt plus U on your keyboard. Now the chopper will open. Adjust the time multiplicator and click accept. And now to top it off, create a velocity curve like this. If you want to take it another step further, you could also play around with the panning. You can make the hi-hat roll go from left to right to create more dynamics. Awesome! Now, what I see or hear a lot on YouTube beats are overcomplicated melodies. That can actually ruin everything, especially when you're trying to sell your beats. You don't want the rapper to skip your beat and move on to the next one. It's so important to learn how far you can go with your melodies and you can actually learn everything about that right here in this video. Thank you! Gotta go now! Goodbye!